Hello friends, welcome to lesson four in my bourbon school. And of course, today we're gonna to talk about a really big topic on how you make whiskey. And I'm just gonna come with a disclaimer right off the bat here. This is going to be super high level. There's so many steps and processes involved in making whiskey that I mean, this video will take hours upon hours if I should go into all the details. So what I'll be going through are uh, some of the basic steps on a very, very high level. And in fact, what I'll probably do over the next couple of lessons is that I'll go more in depth uh, with some of the things that I'll be going through, but I'll get back to that uh, during this video. All right. And um, for this particular video, I have actually chosen a um, very nice six year old bourbon from Wilderness Trail. This was actually gifted to me uh, from my friend, uh, friend Pat Heist, who's actually making this whiskey. Uh, he's one of the most clever people um, in the whiskey industry, and he knows a lot about the distillation process and especially about fermentation. And we'll get back to fermentation in just a second. So let's start off with a cheers. Cheers, y'all. Mm, thanks, Pat. Anyway, all right, let's get to it. So the four basic steps of making whiskey, um, there are a lot more uh, steps as I talked to about before, but the four main steps will be, first, you need to prepare the grains. Then you need to do something called mashing, and I'll tell you all about that in a second. And then you go to the fermentation process. And then of course, most importantly, maybe the distillation process. If you look up uh, steps of making whiskey on Google, internet, whatever, uh, you'll actually see five steps where the aging, uh, very importantly, of course, for American whiskey, is also there, but I'll not be covering aging in this video. There's so much going on in aging that I'll probably make three or four lessons on that topic alone, but that will probably be in three or four lessons. Let's see. All right. All right. Let's go into the first step. So grain preparation. So basically, and some of the videos before, if you uh, listen to some of, some of the previous lessons, uh, you heard about there are different types of grains that you could use, uh, cereal grains and other types of grains. So what you want to do in preparation of the, um, of the grains is that you want to get access to the starch that are inside the kernels. And you can see here um, on my left here, um, you have some corn, grain, corn kernels uh, that you actually you use pretty much an industrial hammer um, or food processor if you want to do it yourself. Uh, make it into a very, very coarse, uh, not, not flour because that will be too much, but a very, very coarse meal, if you will. And the whole purpose of this is, as I said, you want to access the starch inside the kernels. It's very, very hard to get access when you have the husk around the kernel um, and you want to get it chunked into fairly coarse meal. Uh, so there's a lot of surface uh, for the starch. And the reason you want to do this is that um, you actually want uh, to convert that starch into glucose. Because you, as you'll learn later on, um, you probably heard about that you add uh, yeast cells uh, for the distillation, the fermentation process, and um, they really like glucose. Because as you can see here on the picture, if you look at starch, it's a very, very complex molecule. In fact, um, you can see here, it sort of looks a little bit like the glucose on the bottom here, uh, but it's sort of connective our rings and they can be very, very complex up to three to 600 of these um, glucose, glucose-like uh, molecules uh, bonded in there. And the good thing is um, there is actually a way to get all that starch converted into glucose because the yeast cells that you'll see in a second, it's very, very tough for them to uh, digest these very, very complex starch modules. So you want to convert them into glucose. And to the rescue comes uh, an, an enzyme called amylase. There's also other enzymes, but this is the probably the most uh, well-known of this. And it looks beautiful, as you can see here. It's a picture that I uh, snagged off the internet. I'm sure it doesn't exactly look like this, but some scientists indicate uh, that, that it looks somewhat like this. So very, very beautiful. And the great thing about this is that uh, if you... Um, put amylase together with the starch, it'll actually convert it into glucose, so sugar, uh, in a couple of hours. So that's actually pretty phenomenal. So how on earth do you get hold of this amylase? Well, 
this is uh, interesting, molded barley to the rescue here. And in fact, the next lesson, lesson five, will be about what is molting and why do you molt? But in essence, as you can see here, these are actually barley seeds. You probably heard that malted barley is in a lot of whiskey, especially in Scotland, there where it's almost exclusively, at least for single malts, um, uh, malted barley. And it's basically barley seeds that have been allowed to germinate a little bit. So these sprouts, as you can see here, are coming out. And in the sprouts are amylase, and that will actually convert the glucose, sorry, the uh, starch into glucose. So very, very important. So that's why you add malted barley into the mix. But I'll go into super level details in the next um, uh, lesson about that. All right. So once you've done all that, so you prepared all your grains, so you have your very, very coarse meal and you have your malted barley ready, uh, then you want to do something called mashing. And in essence, mashing is simply just making porridge. You can imagine that you uh, heat up a lot of water, um, probably in the range of 160 Fahrenheit, I don't know what would be, about 80 Celsius or something like this. Um, and then you add the different uh, types of grains uh, that you added for your specific whiskey. Um, there are really big differences on how the distillers want to do this. Um, they tend to put in corn first and then uh, rye a little bit later. Someone, someone do, say, do it other way around. They also experiment with having a certain temperature for the corn and then raising it or lowering it a little bit for the next uh, copper grain. That's really up to the individual distiller what they, what they want to do. But essentially you are making porridge. And as you add that malted barley there, that malted barley is a godsend because literally a couple of hours after you added the malted barley or whatever malted grain type you want to use, all those glucose molecules are broken down into, sorry, uh, starch uh, molecules are broken into gluco glucose, which is sugar, which we will use in the next step where we're doing fermentation. So you're essentially making porridge. And I actually been tasting this uh, a few times. If you've ever been on a distillery tour, you can also get a chance to, to taste this a little bit. It tastes a little bit like, like maybe a grainy sweet tea or something like this. It, it's, not, it's not bad, but it, it's also a little bit weird, I would say. All right. On to the next step. So this is where we have the fermentation, of course, also important. So the fermentation, what happens basically is that you are essentially making beer. So you are adding yeast cells to the mash uh, that we saw before. And, and on the screen here, I have a video that I shot myself at a tour on, in Buffalo Trace. So if you had done a distillery tour yourself, you may have seen this, you know, there's a lot of bubbles going on here. And essentially these yeast cells, uh, you normally say they piss alcohol and fart CO2, excuse my friends, but that's basically what they do. So they eat these glucose molecules, they produce alcohol, which is ethanol and methanol, and we'll get back to that in a second. And then uh, basically they also produce CO2, which is obviously going up in the air. And that's why you can see on the bubbles on the screen here. And I would say um, once you've done this fermentation, it probably goes over two, four, five days. Some do a little, little bit more. Um, uh, you have a proof level of about 15 or 7 to 8 percent ABV. So essentially what you will have from a commercial beer. I also been tasting this. Um, it also tastes a little bit weird. Um, it is actually beer, um, but uh, it's not really something you will you will like to drink uh, of that. It, it, it tastes a little bit grainy and and, and I wouldn't recommend it, but it's fun to taste at least. It's also a little bit on the sweet side. So once you get to that seven, eight uh, percent or around 15 uh, proof level, you actually want to cool it down a little bit. Um, uh, here, the fermentation, it's, it's probably um, uh, around 90 proof or something like this, uh, I would guess. And then you go to the next process, which of course is, uh, is the distillation process. But I just want to show, I just want to talk about these um, yeast cells for a second. They are amazing. There are about 1500 known yeast cells um, out there. Um, they are very tiny. Uh, just to give you an idea, that's about 20 billion yeast cells in a gram. Uh, which is probably about half a trillion or something in, in an ounce of, of yeast cells. So, so a lot of them are going on here. And they are something very particular to the, to the, uh, to the manufacturers. Some of them um, are using fairly standard uh, 
uh, yeast cells and uh, others are using someone that has been cultivated over years and years and years, even 100 years, that they kept the same yeast ring alive because that is what exactly makes um, uh, their uh, whiskey uh, special. And as we'll le learn later on, um, a lot of the taste of whiskey comes from the barrel, of course, but actually also about 20, 30 percent, depending on you, how you want to calculate that, comes actually from the whiskey distillate itself. And the yeast cells are very, very important. Um, you may have heard or even experienced yourself, for instance, that if you drink a, or you, if you smell a, a Jack Daniels product, there's a little bit of a banana in there. And that banana uh, smell comes actually from, from the yeast cells. So it's, it's very, very important. All right, as promised. Onto the distillation, which is sort of, sort of the most um, difficult uh, part and the most involved part of, of the process here. So basically what you do, you take your beer and put into a still and heat it up. And as you can see on the screen here, there are two types of stills out there. And I may want to do a lesson where I go into the details. The one on the far left here is called a pot still. It's very, very classic um, a design here. And the one just next to me is uh, what is called a column still, probably, or some also call it a continuous still, a column still, because you can see it, it looks pretty much like a column. And the way you operate that, and some also say the, the kind of whiskey you can get out of, out of it is, is very, very different. So I'll, as I said, I'll probably go into that in a lesson on, on the DLSS app, but you can sort of use both of them. So in essence, uh, you, put in uh, your, uh, the, ma the, the mash that you fermented, uh, which is essentially your distiller's beer, and then you heat it up. And as you probably know from school, um, alcohol, of course, uh, evaporates before the water itself. I think, uh, as recall, about 78% uh, Celsius, sorry, uh, 78 degrees Celsius. And of course, um, uh, water is 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. So, as the alcohol vapors that sort of rise up in the pot still or the column still, uh, it goes into a special part of the still where there's potentially some cool water or cold water running around. So those vapors, they get condensed again and actually turns into a liquid again. And that's actually your alcohol. And it's a combination of, of ethanol, which is the good stuff, and methanol, which is not the good stuff, which make, makes you sick. But how you divide that, I'll get on to in, in just a second. And after this first um, round here, you have something with the weird name low wine. I actually don't know why, who came up with this name uh, because it's not wine at all, uh, but that's actually what it's called here. And you are talking about about 60 proof, 30 ABV in that vicinity there, a little bit lower, a little bit higher, depending on the manufacturer. And that's uh, pr pretty much where you are with your first run. And then in principle, you do it again, you do your second distillation. And um, you can, in principle, do it in the same equipment once again. Um, uh, most uh, manufacturers have special uh, equipment for the second distillation. You can see on the screen, there's something called a Doppler that can do something similar. So once you have the second distillation, the high wine, then basically you are almost done because then you have whiskey uh, that is about in principle, but in the US by law for most whiskey types, it's a maximum of 160 uh, proof or 80% ABV, but there are other places in the world where you can go much higher. And as probably we discussed in the first lesson or two, if you want to do vodka, for instance, you go through numerous distillations, seven, 10, even more uh, of the of these cycles that I just explained, and the ABV gets higher and higher and higher. And also very famously in Ireland, they typically do three uh, distillation runs instead of two, uh, like in, in the US. All right. And then in essence, once you have that, you have something called white dog. And that's actually whiskey and that's it. So this white dog, you can see I have a commercial product here from Buffalo Trace. Uh, I use that in most of the whiskey tastings that I uh, conduct uh, just so people can feel what is whiskey, what, what does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? Just when it comes off the still. And as you can see here, it's completely clear like water, which is why you actually call it white. Um, the name dog is because it has a little bit of a bite when you when you drink it, right? Because in this example here, it's 125 proof or 62.5% alcohol. So it's, it's very, very potent. 
and in principle, this is whiskey. Uh, you don't have to do anything else uh, to to make whiskey, and this this should be a corn whiskey. Of course, if you want to sell it as a rye whiskey or a bourbon whiskey, it has to be aged at least a little bit in in uh, casks or in barrels. But I'll get much more into the details about how you age whiskey in not the next lesson because there'll be a malting, but the lessons after that. All right, and that's it. So. Um, Easy peasy, right? So those four steps, and as I mentioned, you know, a lot of more details. I'll get back to those in in upcoming lessons. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Cheers.